one said that I would be perhaps dead by Christmas. No one said that. They just said it was aggressive and perhaps I didn't have all that long. We started to make all sorts of preparations. I wrote my will. We decided we'd probably have to sell the house. I wanted to see Hamish settled um, before, before I left him because I'd been caring for him for some time and he was foremost in my mind about that. Um, but I wasn't worried about myself at all because I knew it's the only, well, it's the only thing we know that's going to happen to us. We are alive and we die. Everybody dies. And it was a real privilege. It was an honour to know that I had, t I had some time perhaps to prepare. been this empty space and when Simon died I had to go and search and I met up with a group of Christians and discovered that one of these Christians lived down in England in the same village as I was in where Simon took ill because he died from a brain tumour and they were praying for my son and I'd come to this wee village in Fife and we got to know each other and they said, we were actually praying for your Simon. And I, I was gobsmacked, I couldn't take it in. How, how or why were these people praying for my son? I didn't even know them. And then I discovered they were Christians and I wondered about that. <laughs> Take seconds out, take time out, quick five minutes. Lots of things happen to other friends that they ask you to pray about. I try not to make it asking all the time, but to be thankful and give thanksgiving. Thank the Lord for this world, for the sun, moon, and stars, and all the things that He's made. If I look back on it now, during those first couple of months, things were in a turmoil. I don't know if I really was myself. I was saying all the right things to all the right people, but I'm not sure exactly what was going on inside. I was probably angry, I was probably grieving, and all those sort of emotions. I felt bad about it. But why feel bad about it? just happens, that's it. You've got it. Why does Mrs. So-and-so next door not have it? Because she doesn't. She's got it. So we just get on with it. The Tuesday meetings for me have been happy and sad. Very, very happy. Very, very sad. It's full of laughter but within five minutes perhaps you could be crying and it's an absolutely wonderful place. And you're allowed to do all of those things. Whereas at home sometimes you have to be careful what you say. We do have little secrets we have with each other that we know will go won't go any farther. That's, that's a wonderful thing to be able to have that kind of relationship. And life has all the meaning now. No matter where I am or what I'm doing, there's this peace. It's always there. No matter how hard life is, this peace is there. Peace beyond understanding. And that's what keeps me going too, knowing there's a loving God.